Hey there internet, I am the PC Goblin. In this video, we're gonna be testing out my Wi-Fi 6 access point, which is the Ingenious EWS 357AP. It's an AX1800 2x2 dual concurrent 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz architecture access point. Sorry, that's a lot to remember, so I just read it off the box. But we're gonna be testing it out with the iPhone XS Max. So this is not a Wi-Fi 6 device. This is just Wi-Fi 5 or 802.11ac versus the Samsung Galaxy S10e. And this is a Wi-Fi 6 device. So in theory, this device should bury my iPhone XS Max. So before we do the tests, I wanna show you how I have everything set up. So this is the access portal or the management interface for my access point. You can see I've only got two devices on it and nothing on 2.4, only five gigahertz. And just to show you the real time real quick, there's very little traffic happening on it. So it's dedicated just to this test. Basic, nothing special there for wireless. I have green mode turned off, got it on 802.11ax, AC, N, and A. So Wi-Fi 6, 5, 4, 3. So I've got it set to 80 megahertz. So this is the biggest pipe that I can connect to it through. And the transmit power is set to auto, bit rate, whatever, client limit, doesn't matter. I have just the one SSID, 2.4 gigahertz is disabled, just five gigahertz, WPA2 is the security, advanced, you know, nothing special going on there. So as you can see, nothing special going on with it, except other than it's dedicated just to these two devices. All right, so before we get into actual testing, I'm gonna tell you the setup a little bit. So I've got all my Ubiquiti access points set up through my house, how they normally are. I'm leaving them all running. I'm not changing anything with their settings. And then I also have the Wi-Fi 6 access point set up. I mean, you've seen how I have that set up, but the channels are different, but I'm also leaving it in place. So it's kind of a more real world kind of testing situation. So if you were to shove the Wi-Fi 6 access point into your house, and if your house is you know, closer to neighbors, mine isn't, I've got a lot of space between all my neighbors all the way around. So I really don't have a whole lot of interference from their networks. I do see their networks, but I mean, they are far away from mine. So I'm leaving all that set up and connected. So we got kind of a more real world interference on there. I believe they're all on different channels, so it really shouldn't matter that much. The internet connection to my house is a direct fiber connection. So I've got really fast, low latency internet. I've got a thousand down and a thousand megabits up per second, you know, both ways. And so it's extremely fast. It's gonna be faster than anything we're gonna be pulling off of the phones. And to test it, I'm gonna be using the speedtest.net app. And I know it's gonna vary based on whatever server that you're connected to, but from what I'm seeing, I've got very consistent, very reproducible results that do reflect the difference between the two phones, I think. I know there's other apps like iPerf that I could use, but just testing iPerf real quick, I couldn't get the consistent results, nor the same app and everything that I saw was always slower than what I would see with the speedtest.net app. So we're gonna be doing just the speedtest.net app. So, and then to just restate, we're gonna only be using the five gigahertz channel. This will also make sure we're using the newest, fastest Wi-Fi 6 standard with the Samsung, and then also keep us on the fastest standard with the iPhone as well. So before this gets too boring, let's go ahead and dive into the tests and see what we get. Okay, so full disclosure, my basement is unfinished, which you've probably seen in other videos, but we're just outside my mechanical room. And just over there is where I've got my main setup, like my main PC and all that's just over there. And just to show you the server room real quick, just come through that door, boom, got the server set up. Okay, so this location is more or less one floor down and then about five or 10 feet away from where the access point is sitting. I'm gonna start with the Android first. Switch over to the iPhone real quick. Okay, so the first run, the Android almost got double the download speed, so 414 down versus 186 on the iPhone, and then 307 upload on the iPhone, 340 on the Android. So we'll do it one more time just to see how things go. Okay, 
Okay, so a bit better results on the iPhone, about the same results on the Android. So we're now gonna run them both at the same time to see how that works. And as you can see, they're both going to the same speed test server, both multi. So everything's exactly the same other than, you know, the hardware that's inside them. So now we're gonna do them concurrently. Just to make sure the results are accurate. So there we have it running at the same time the iphone actually performs better the if you're looking at the results right now the 327 on the android is higher but it only got higher when the iphone finished before that it was struggling quite a bit before so if you rewind you can see that all right now we're going to test another location all right to give you an idea of where this is at we're by this window but if i flip around you can see you know, my main setup and then where we were testing was behind the wall and stairs and over quite a bit of ways. We're more or less at the front of my house and as far away from the AP that we can be inside the house. So I'm gonna start with the iPhone this time. So comparing the last two runs, they're almost identical. So the last run was 191 down on the iPhone, 99 up. Then on the Samsung, 199 down, so a little bit faster. And a little bit faster on the up with 112 up. And then back to the iPhone on the first run was 200 down, 105 up. And then the Android, 219, 117. Roughly about the same at this distance, but still in favor of the Samsung. All right, so now we're gonna do the concurrent testing, letting them run at the exact same time. So running them concurrently, download speeds were more or less the same and showed more or less exactly what we saw when we were running them one at a time, but now we're at half the speed. So 109 down on Samsung, 90, we'll round up, 99 down on the iPhone, 20 up, and then 80 up on the Samsung. And then looking at both results, we had 142 down the first concurrent time and 31 up on the first run on the iPhone and then 102 down and 79 up on the Samsung. So when both devices are running max speed at the same time, I'm going to give this completely to the Samsung because while the iPhone the first time had much faster up, the Samsung has more even and accurate results going both up and down. And it's much, much faster on the up on the Samsung. So that's definitely a win in my, in my book for the Samsung, even though its top speed wasn't quite as high. So now we are on the main floor and just about where the AP is, it's literally right in the corner on top of the cabinets right there. Let me see if I can show it to you. We're gonna start with the iPhone. So I've done this testing quite a bit and always seen the Samsung come out on top. So it's a little surprising to me that the iPhone's going faster, but we'll run it again just to see. Yeah. Just to compare results, look at the last three. So in the last run, Samsung had the faster download, slower upload at 550 versus 614 on the iPhone. Run before that, 538 down and 586 on the iPhone, 671, 650 on the Samsung on that same run, and then 605 and 631 on the first run on the Samsung, and the first run on the iPhone was 665, 583. Now we'll do it concurrently at the same time. <laughs> These results are interesting with it favoring the iPhone, but then on top of that, just splitting like the 600 or 700 megabits of bandwidth between the two devices rather than giving them both their max capabilities. Because the AP can support up to 1200 megabits per second in the five gigahertz frequency, and that's what we're using. And there's no other devices eating up the bandwidth, so it's literally just these two. But it's only got a two by two antenna, so I don't think it's got enough antennas to be able to properly give both devices the full capability and bandwidth that in this section. So now that we've tested right by the AP with no floors or walls or really anything in between to interfere, let's move on to the next section.
So now we're outside testing it. We're just right outside my front door. So there's my doorbell camera and my locks. Door is shut. This location is about as far as the location that we did downstairs by the window. You know, it's outside. It's got to go through more walls, including a door. So this is going to give us an idea how good the connection is to my doorbell on, you know, with the new Wi-Fi 6 technology. This time we'll start with the Samsung. Make sure they're still going to BYU. And then Wi-Fi is still on better than yours. So the Samsung I only have paired to my or to the Wi-Fi 6. It's not on my Ubiquity stuff. The iPhone is, so I'm making sure that it doesn't switch back and forth or whatever. Now to run them at the same time. The first run outside at the same time favored the iPhone in download speed with 166 versus 138 on the Samsung, but then the second time is 163 down on the Samsung versus 129. Once again, the uploads were more even on the Samsung versus the iPhone where they're kind of all over. Granted, the iPhone was able to get a lot higher in the end because this finished way before the iPhone did, so once that did, it shot way up. Now to show you where we're at, we are now 20 feet away or 30 feet away from the front door. So pretty far away from the access point. Plus it's got to go through all the closed doors and walls and everything else. Plus now I have the chance for outside interference to happen. Make sure it's still connected. It's still on better than yours. Start with the Samsung. And the iPhone won't even start out here. So we are really far away from it. We are at the edge of my property, which you can kind of see the line right there. But there's my house. Hit and go. And before I begin, this phone does not have cell for service. I don't have a SIM card in it. I haven't put it on any plan. You can see in the top right corner, it's still got Wi-Fi signal. So at the edge of my property, I still have great speeds on the 5 gigahertz network. So now looking up, we are way down the street, way far away from my house, at the edge of my neighbor's property. But that black chair, that is where my iPhone cut out. I tried it again after finding this part out and it connected again but it was super slow and not very good but now testing the samsung this is still only connected to my access point so see better than yours hit and go there we have it like that's nuts. And just to hopefully prove it, if you doubted it. So, looking up. And there's my house again. Like, holy crap. <laughs> well, those are some really interesting results if you ask me. But, I mean, it really just shows. Don't buy Apple, they suck. Clearly Samsung's the clear winner. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, it is impressive what the Samsung does, but I mean, this this isn't a true comparison. This is really just Wi-Fi 6 versus Wi-Fi 5. So if, if you didn't catch that, that's what it was. But it was really interesting to see that inside the house, Wi-Fi 6 between the two phones, there really was a huge um, top-end performance difference between the two. They both pretty much held their own. Um, overall, like I said a few times through it, the Samsung results, to me, were a lot better than the iPhone, even though a lot of the time the iPhone maybe had a bit higher of a score, depending on the upload or download or whatever. It had the most even and consistent results every single time. And the reason that's important and impressive to me is that, that to me says you're going to have a much more consistent and smooth experience with accessing the internet. But most impressively was when we went outside. That is where we saw the absolute biggest difference. So to just build that up a little bit more, the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, 
that is really broad and can broadcast really, really far. So getting out far with that isn't that impressive. But with five gigahertz, that frequency is a lot harder to push far. So your range isn't as good. So with five gigahertz on Wi-Fi 5 or 802.11ac, I'm generally fine inside, everywhere inside my house. I've got fast, good speeds, but as soon as I step outside my house, kind of disappears and I'm relying on the 2.4 gigahertz to give me internet. And then that goes out pretty far and it's, it's okay, but it's definitely a whole lot slower than five gigahertz. Comparing how far I got with five gigahertz with Wi-Fi 6, that's absolutely impossible with Wi-Fi 5. You just can't do it. So I was able to get like almost two properties away from mine, still be able to connect. I, I did have to have line of sight of my house. Like if there was another house or something in the way, it couldn't connect. But as long as it had direct sight, it could connect and it would pull 50 down, you know, 10 up or whatever it was. And when I finally did disconnect from the Wi-Fi 6 access point from being too far away or whatever, I, I couldn't even see the SSID back in spots where I was able to pull 50 down. So with these findings, I'm really excited for the future to, for all my devices to have Wi-Fi 6 because I can get a whole lot further with a whole lot faster of a connection and a lot better of an experience. So if you're wanting to start upgrading your network or adding Wi-Fi 6 to your network right now, I'd really recommend getting the Ingenious Wi-Fi 6 AP. It is an amazing device. It's great. If you already have a good router, there, there's no reason to buy a whole nother one. It's kind of like buying a brand new computer because you need a better graphics card. Chances are your computer is more than capable enough to have a better graphics card. So now if if you took that same money, you could get a much better graphics card and still get amazing performance. It's kind of more or less the same thing with an access point. If you get this, you can disable the slower, older Wi-Fi in your router and run strictly off of the Wi-Fi for the access point. It'll still be the same network, so all your wired devices can still talk to all your wireless devices. If you want to get the ingenious access point, I've got links in my description below. I have the 2x2 model that I used in this video, but then I've also added their newer 4x4 model, which is going to be even better. If you only have a few wireless devices connecting to your network, then you're probably not going to see a whole lot of difference between the 2x2 and the 4x4. I'd really like to know what you guys think about Wi-Fi 6 and this video in the comments below, so please leave a comment. This video was only about 5 gigahertz with Wi-Fi 6, and the reason I did that is because that's where all the speed is, but Wi-Fi 6 also made improvements to 2.4, where 802.11ac or Wi-Fi 5 made no changes to 2.4. So if you'd like to see another video like this comparing Wi-Fi 6 2.4, now let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. And at the very least, I'd really like to know your thoughts about this video and my testing and what you guys think about Wi-Fi 6. But if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you disliked it, well, smash the dislike button. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. That way you can see all my new videos. I love doing this. And I really appreciate all the support that I get from my subscribers. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next time.